It's the Dutcher Snedeker Podcast. <laughs> Starring Dutcher Snedeker. With music by special guest, uh, Dutcher Snedeker. I don't know if that'll be the intro. (laughs) So hello, we're here. We being you, the listener, me, the podcast host. You've probably listened to a podcast, but this is the first one that I'm doing. My name is Dutcher Snedeker, and this is my podcast where you will get to kind of see a journey of me adapting to this format. I have never hosted a podcast in such a way I have hosted other things and I have been a part of podcasts as a guest, but I'm more of a listener than I have ever been a host. But today we're going to talk about a few things in music, you know, mainly pertaining to the craziness that is 2020 and how that has looked as someone in the industry. And Before we get to that, I don't have any sponsors, but I do want to make a note of some things you can check out. If you want to support me during these times, you can go to DutcherSnedeker.com and you can find all sorts of goodies from the bands that I play in to the music that I've recorded to merch, things that you can be involved with. And if you're listening to this right now, then you've already done your part because I also have a Patreon, patreon Patreon.com. Uh, URL is pending. I, I'm assuming it's going to be my name, but I'll add it in later and edit it if it's not my name. <laughs> I don't know who would have my name for my Patreon. But again, you are at the start of a journey of adapting, understanding what this format is for me creatively, and understanding what you might get out of it as a, a listener. You know, I... I Love chatting with different people, but I also love speaking my mind on certain topics. And I feel like this is a better format to think about topics, to discuss topics than social media has been. I do get in some good conversations, but you know, the algorithm doesn't doesn't like doesn't like conversation. It likes yelling. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. And you know, we're all kind of in a place that we didn't think we'd be in <laughs> nearing the end of 2020. I have always kicked around the idea of doing a podcast and, you know, this is my attempt at it. As you can see, I'm in an office. I didn't think I'd be back in the third coast so soon. I, I left my other office just across the hall earlier this year. I left it Um, because at the time there was going to be an office space built in somewhere I didn't have to pay rent. So I could still be in the area, still do things, but not have to worry about the cost of doing business in the studio. I could just be, you know, assisting, but you know, here we are. I'm back in here. It's, it's a great environment. If you are listening to the audio, you can't really see kind of the clutter that is my office right now. (laughs) I mean, I've got like some semblance of a green screen set up here and I have like, uh, you know, this table off to the side where I'm monitoring things and and where the, the keyboard camera is currently filming. So, you know, I've just installed these guitar hang hangers guitar hangers i just kind of picked spots and drilled holes into the boards so or rather screwed in screws into the boards on that wall so it's coming together but if you're listening to this on patreon you also have the opportunity to check out you know a rig rundown i'm going to have two one that's already going to be up when this podcast is up and that's a, it's a live rig rundown. It's what I use with 
Earth Radio at like you know peak bringing is a bunch of gear and like what I would bring if I needed to bring a rig to a studio setting. So it covers all the bases there. The other review I'm going to be doing is of this kind of brainstorming station that is in my office that is going to be where I do more live streaming stuff, you know, things I can kind of get a better shot of more gear, more of what I'm trying to do. It's it's all a process. And like I mentioned, this podcast is about 2020. It's about, you know, the confusion that we've all had as artists, as sound engineers, as booking agents, as talent buyers, as, you know, p- music publishers, music, you know, editors, writers, collaborators, you just put music in front of a job and you probably have either lost it or transitioned into a different part of it. And I can tell, you know, or I can say rather from personal experience that I've lost a lot of work. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I just kind of have to remind myself why I started doing music in the first place. It's, um, you know, it's about the piano. I've been taking piano since I was eight years old. Playing piano. And, you know, just trying to find where I fit in, what skills I want to learn. And um, I always have to remind myself to come back to the piano when, when things are stressful. I have to remind myself, like, all the work that I've put into this instrument. Getting two different degrees, trying to, you know, work on all these different collaborations. And I can't get hung up too much on, like, the semantics of it all. Because I'm, you know... Music work isn't as permanent as normal work, so I have to remind myself of that. But this year is crazy. (laughs) So think back to, you know, January. For me, I was working with uh, West Shore Community College in Ludington. I was living there four days a week um, with, you know the expectation that I was going to be there every day that rehearsals were happening for West Shore Community College's production of Mamma Mia. So I was helping people, you know, run music parts, you know, playing the music for the cast, getting everyone ready for the final, you know, show, bringing in the rest of the band, all that. Um, While I was in that role... This is my second year, which, you know, I love. It, it feels like a working vacation because I get to spend some time, you know, kind of resetting, thinking about my goals for the year while I'm doing this work for a Michigan college and, you know, enjoying that work. And then I went to NAM. It was my first time going to NAM, and I was representing QSAC Music slash Mojo Hand Effects. They're a um, effects pedal company out of Holland. Great group of people. Friends of mine have worked for them. You know, they put out some great pedals. I use um, their Dream Mender pedal currently on my pedal board. It's a great, great, like, wider delay option for me. It adds to the spacey sounds that I try to make with, like, Earth Radio and stuff. But I was there at NAM, doing a bunch of stuff. I was, you know, being overwhelmed by the size of it. You know, it's like, imagine, imagine you're in, you know, like a a stadium, I guess, or like an indoor, if you ever played like indoor sports, imagine like a big indoor sports facility, like it's a big convention center. So if you've gone to a like Comic-Con or any of those, you know, comic book conventions or, you know, nerd culture conventions, conventions for anything, really. They, you know, they got gun conventions. You can go be like, this is my gun. And you're like, oh, it's your gun. It's my gun, too. It's great. But this was like, imagine that is filled with the the sound, the collective sound of like a thousand guitar centers. And then next to that is like 
a hundred clubs just blaring beats and music and while you're navigating through that you're seeing like oh that guy's from youtube that guy's like playing with this artist on tour that's Corey henry that's robert glasper that's ghost note that's marcus miller he's at this booth that's this per like you're just the whole time you're like i want to uh i gotta say hi but i also gotta get to my booth but i also want to check out this thing on during the break I, you know you're it's very cool as much as it is overwhelming to see so many industry people all getting together and you know that was that was january doing the musical going to nam did some shows at founders brewing company like working shows and performing uh february crooked tree creative launched as a brand as a creative consulting agency where i was a booking agent and i was you know tasked with working with like five groups and we were like all gung-ho like we're gonna do it. this is the year we're gonna make our imprint we're gonna have people on the ground at all these festivals we got plans for you know trying to you know help create systems so that it's you know getting the word out about the group to the rest of the michigan community and connecting you know our names with that brand and trying to grow it and you know we did a big showcase at third coast which is where this office is by the way third coast recording company in grand haven the you know we were super excited about it we were like this is you know we're showcasing all these artists they're all going to have a couple videos shot by dogtown studio you're gonna have audio it's gonna be great it's a good start to everything and then as that was happening i was also recording earth radio's most recent release reanimate so i was carving out time to do studio stuff we had done a show opening for the go rounds at bells like we were you know excited about this year and i was excited to kind of have a repeat of what happened last year where we had a lot of momentum we had played a string of our first michigan festivals with the band you know we were getting some repeat offers from festivals we played last year it was great we were just you know getting ready getting ready to get into that flow of like okay we got an album coming we're gonna go you know promote it we're gonna play these songs out we're gonna you know really have fun with it and then you know everything shut down <laughs> it's I, I i equate it to like if you ever watched avatar the last airbender they're like like the the nations live together in harmony and then everything changed when the fire nation attacked and that's like where the show you know like the show's picking up where the fire nations just like dominated everyone's lives and that's kind of what happened with covid it's like all right no more open venues no more touring i lot you know i had a couple tours that got canceled um no you know recording work third coast had to shut down for a couple months uh no you know regular work at wyce which you know it wasn't paid work but it was me contributing to a, a publication and nobody was there it was like bare minimum for broadcasting type stuff and then you know no shows at founders brewing company so i you know being a sound engineer if there's no shows happening if the venue's not even opening i can't go work a show and you know it it was an adjustment um right away i'm like okay i have some recording gear let's get that rolling like in, you know this lockdown's not going to be forever like we'll we'll be able to get back out there and you know th people start taking it seriously and <laughs> And uh, what a world we, ah, what a world, you know, wasn't it great to like look at people and be like, that person's not totally insane. You know, humanity is beautiful. It's just this beautiful collection of wonderful people. And then you're like, uh, no, sorry. They're actually like. They're all dissonant. <laughs> You're like, okay, it's all just tension. Imagine, like, think musically. Like, oh, where's this going? Okay, it's just still tense. Imagine this for like eight months. You're like, okay, uh, <laughs> everything's getting crazier. And then, you know, I. 
adapted in some ways. I've I've done more remote collaborating, which is cool. I've been involved with more people trying to get stuff recorded and helping by tracking keyboard parts. But also doing some music review writing, also, you know, being on unemployment, but looking for ways to earn money on top of that, buying the necessary equipment, like everything you're seeing here is kind of a mixture of things that the studio had, like this mic isn't mine, this is the studio's. The boom arm that's it, it's on isn't mine, it's the studio's. But, you know, I'm using my iPhone, I'm using another camera, that's mine. The the interface is mine, the stands are mine, the, you know, these headphones I'm wearing are mine. So, it's, you know, it's, a, it's finding that blend of, like, what things do I have at my disposal. And that was partially why in October I was like, you know what, this office is open. I kind of want to be in it. I'll figure it out. I'll work to get it to a point where I'm able to keep doing work and enjoy myself and also contribute to something, you know, earth radio is still doing stuff. Blushing monk hasn't done anything since February. We put out an album this year, uh, blushing monk being my jazz group. Um, and even then I didn't send out copies for review until like September. Cause I was just so focused on, figuring out this new landscape and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, this whole, this whole year's kind of been like, all right, let, what if we tried this? All right. Some people can do it. Some people can't. All right. What if we try having shows outdoors? All right. If it gets too cold, nobody's not, nobody's going to really want to come. All right. Let's, what if we, you know, there's always the talk of like, well, let's, let's make content. All right. But that's, you know, it can be as easy, like literally what I'm doing is just a more complex version of point my phone at my face and start talking. And that's a skill that, you know, I'm still going to develop and work on. But it's another thing that I just, it's been kicking around in my head ever since I found out about Patreon as a platform, ever since I started listening to podcasts and being like, oh, this is, this isn't just like an audio book. This is a whole other format. It's more dynamic. It can be whatever you want it to be, really. You know, audio can be manipulated. People are shooting video and making these little clips and those can be cool. Like, oh, I've I've seen there's podcasts I haven't even seen yet, but I've seen clips because the clips are popular. And I've been thinking this whole year like how do I get into this format? When really I just need to do this, point the camera at my face and start talking because if something's pointing at me, my natural performing instinct is going to kick in and I'm going to have to do something. I have to do something like, like this isn't planned. Like, oh, look, oh, I better play C minor because that's uh, analytically C minor is a key that resonates with people. No, there's, there's a dude in Vietnam counting <laughs> and singing. He's sing counting in English. His name's Soy Tiet. Go look him up on Instagram. All he does is sing count. And people are like, yes, I'm like that. He's like, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, wait. What is this note? What, however you do it, you, you figure it out. <laughs> um, but the, the whole, you know, there's no, as much as you want to research the business, like me, I, this whole year has been like, what do I need to get into? What are the things that provide longevity that I can invest in? Because I don't know when shows are going to happen again. I don't, I haven't booked anything other than like one, one person. Think about this. You know, out of all the things that I tried to plan for this year, I had one, one festival, rather a concert series, one concert series that was like, hey, do you want to play next year? 
And then I had, you know, probably three or four instances of, well, you could do it virtually. And then out of those four, like half of them paid. So think about that. Normally you book a show, you negotiate a price, you go there, you have the opportunity to earn more on what you're getting paid because you're bringing merch and you're advertising what the band is and the brand. You're like, hey, if you dig the sound, buy the album. If you like how, you know, some of our artwork looks on the album, buy a shirt. If you like, you know, the the band and you want to support, follow our socials, share them with friends. Maybe they want to get some merch. Maybe buy a beanie for your your cousin because it's cold. You know, <laughs> we're not like these deep strategy marketing people. We're all, we're just people trying to play notes. Like, like I always joke, like to do the, Hey, get your, you know, hat, get your uh, beanie. Oh, you like candles? Would you buy a candle? Would you buy anything? Would you buy, like, I don't know, buy, would you buy this round piece of music or the other round piece of music? Oh, you don't know? Okay. Why? <laughs> it should be a yes or no. Like, do you like it? Okay, buy it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. I don't care. I just need to know because... I need to, you know, everything's trial and error, and hey, buy the thing. And then this year is like, all the music fans are like, we want to buy the thing, but we don't have money. Totally understandable. So you see the collective, like, brain power that is needed to navigate through this? Because I I don't do anything else, you know? I'm doing this because it's something I want to do, but it's also something I kind of have to do. As an artist, you, you have to play around with different mediums. And I, I I think about this performance I watched last night. It was called The Drop Concert, and it was Vic Berger and DJ Doug Pound from uh, Tim Heidecker's Office Hours podcast. They They did kind of an improvised music concert that also included all these samples and 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 drops almost like radio DJs these things you'd you'd hear and you'd be like oh that's that person but like a meme or like oh that's from a movie or that's from and then the whole thing was animated by Ben Levine Ben Levine Levin Ben Levin I don't know how to say his name, but he he's a musician who's finding himself animating a ton more. He's made more music videos for people. I, I saw he made a music video for, um, oh, what's the guy's name? He's a bass player, play, uh, Evan Marion. He's, uh, you know, like a, like a fusion-y bass player. And he put out some new music that Ben animated to. But he's never been an animator. He's He hasn't built up a platform. He just got into it as a side hobby and saw that he could earn more money than he would have been trying to only do music. And, you know, podcasting isn't something that's like, you know, everyone sees the Joe Rogan podcast and they're like, oh my gosh, he got paid a hundred million dollars. I'm going to start a podcast. And it's like, well, yeah, but he's been doing it for over 10 years and he didn't just podcast. He's you know, a comedian, UFC person, he's got other avenues. Like that's what I, when I look at people, like the, the first time I've, I heard about, you know, podcasting in a meaningful way and how it interacted with audiences and how it could be used as a way to earn a living against other types of creative content was with this brand called kind of funny. And if you look them up, it's a bunch of people who left, and by a bunch, like seven people who left um, the big uh, video game media outlet, uh, IGN. You know, they're like the top of the heap. They're the ones that got a big, they have a big staff. They go to all the conventions. They, you know, they pump out a lot of content every day on all these platforms. And, you know, these guys left that comfort because they wanted to follow a vision and it was a podcast at first that was just there's no topic it and they still do it it's it's now called the kind of funny podcast but it was the game over greggy podcast and it 
featured them just talking about life. You know, they, they each come in with something to talk about. It might be funny. It might be personal. It might be, you know, something in, in current events. And then they just were talking and they built this rapport with their audience over a few years to the point where they, when they launched their Patreon, they were one of the highest earning pay, Patreons just from podcasting. And then, you know, on the back of that, they were like, you know what? We'll have this brand, the kind of funny brand, and then we'll do the kind of funny games brand where we talk about video games and have more video game content. So now this team of people, they all have some experience on camera. They all have different levels of editing. They all have different levels of using their side talents, whether it's like esports or music or you know, more in-depth videography. They're all contributing to this one idea, but they've branded it in a way that interacts with different audiences. And it's, it's like triple dipping in terms of like what th their staff is capable of. They don't have to hire like, oh, we need, you know, these people are the video game guys and these people know how to talk on camera. It's like, nope, everyone knows how to do that. And even if they don't, they're going to learn. They're going to host a podcast. They're going to try it. They're going to be on camera more. They're going to try video editing. They're going to try to do something that's not even a short form regular thing. So <laughs> it's, I, I say this because it right now, the thing that I love seeing is people doing stuff. And this doesn't have to be at that scale, you know? I see people who put out anything this year and I'm like, you did something. You you made an effort to go, like, I'm going to record this album. I'm going to put, you know, my little, this is my Dutcher's Ragtime Dandies and it's my album of ragtime music. Is Scott Joplin public domain? I don't know. <laughs> the song's like over 100 years old, so... But who owns the copyright? And I'm playing an excerpt of it, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, like the people who were like, I'm going to make an album. And they put out an album. Sure, there might not have been the best marketing. There might not have been this like, oh, wow, we got 6 billion Spotify plays. Or we sold a 1,000 copies in a day of our CD. Like, no. <laughs> Just the fact that you've done anything is 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 motivating because it reminds it reminds me that everybody in the community is on their own their own journey. And when I say community that's you know the Michigan music community, the global music community, you know, everyone's on their own path to like figuring out who they are as a creative person and how they can earn a living from it. And I personally stopped doing any sort of non-creative work Back in 2013, I put in a ton of hours. Oh, it was a, like, think of it this way. I put, this was, this would have been when I was a sophomore at Grand Valley. I put, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into my, each day. I mean, not, <laughs> I say dozens and dozens, but there's only two dozen hours and you're sleeping part of those dozen. But I, every day, Monday through Friday, I would have an 830 math class that I would more often fall asleep in. I ended up failing that class. Um, and then, you know, I'd have an 830 class. I'd have a class, you know, at 10 and then I'd get to take the bus, the rapid, you know, public transportation that would go out to the Allendale campus at Grand Valley. I would take it back downtown, get in my car, drive home. I'd have an hour to change into work clothes because I worked at Magic Steel and my job was to, you know, as shipments come in or as they're going out, I need to repair the skids that the forklift operators would carry all the coiled steel on like whether it's unloading it off of a truck or moving it around the factory and you know, all day, I've, all day for four hours, one to five, 
Monday through Friday, I would, you know, wear earplugs, risk my hands with like saws and nail guns and all these things. <laughs> and I would work because it was like, okay, I need to earn some money that's more regular towards college. Then you get out of work at five. I was getting a stipend to play with the musical. The I think at the time it was the Three Penny Opera at Grand Valley. So I would get back in my car, drive downtown, and catch the bus. I'd have to get downtown ahead of 5.30 to make sure I catch the bus because it was about a half hour commute out to Allendale using the rapid bus. So then... Yeah, I'd be in rehearsal from like 6 until 10, sometimes 11, and then I'd go home, pass out, and do it all over again. And then the weekends were trying to play catch-up. After not even three months of that, I was like, you know, this is not what I want to do. This is too exhausting. I should just pour more efforts into music. And from then on, I haven't worked any job that hasn't at least involved some portion of music, whether it's writing about music learning sound engineering, uh, playing in different groups, trying to be more on top of being a recording artist, studio musician type person. And now I'm getting into creative content because I all I watch is creative content. I don't watch, you know, like I every now and again, I'll watch like a docuseries or a movie or something. But I've been so fascinated with creative people who – have built these like empires from their bedroom. And you're like, how? All they're doing is pointing a camera at themselves. There's got to be more. So I watched some of these people and see what they're doing. I'm not even just watching music people. I'm watching people who like, they, they might start off doing one thing and then they add to what they offer as a creative person. Or maybe they have a small team. Or maybe they, you know, they've, found their voice after a, a career in another field and they have an audience from that and they start doing creative stuff and that audience comes and joins them over there. So I am, I guess I'm stubborn in that way where I'm like, you know what? I got to make it work. And <laughs> uh, this isn't to say that it's all like, Oh, and, and then I lived happily ever after. No, it's, 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 it's hard. I got debts I need to pay. I got, you know, I got things I acquire and then later have to sell because I'm either not using them and I don't, and I need the money or I am using them, but not enough to justify keeping them. And I need the money. It's all about, it's just needing the money. So I, I am of the mindset now where I just have to be consistent. I have to try and I can't be hung up on the semantics because I've been hung up on semantics for like four years now I've been thinking about ever since Patreon launched I've been thinking about like oh this would be great like I'm not this isn't a get rich quick scheme this is me being able to go I want to try podcasting I want to try doing video content I want to try all these things that come with the territory of being a modern musician it's not enough to just play like there are people who are amazing at playing but they still post they still network in that way they still you know they still understand that they have a platform sure their content might be this guy plays really well volume 900 but if that's working why not you're getting better at your instrument and people are tuning in i follow a lot of people who are just like i just play music and i point my phone and it's not anything like this big production. It's just showing my skill sets. So that's kind of what led me to trying to do this, this podcast where it's just me talking. Because it's challenging me to see what it's like to set up this type of thing and just do it. Talking off the cuff. I mean, I'm looking at the little camera indicator and it's, you know, we're above like 33 minutes. All I've been doing is talking. <laughs> like I've, I play these little noodles. This isn't like a concert. It's more of me like 
I'm trying to be my own John Batiste to Colbert or something. And, you know, it's not as easy to just play and talk at the same time for me. So, I want this format to work, but I know it's all, it's going to be me trying and adjusting. I mean, even right now, I don't like the lights for people watching the video. It cast this weird shadow over my face. But you know what? You do it, and then you realize when you look back and you look at yourself and you're like, oh, if I just got better lighting, this would happen. Or, oh, why am I limiting myself to this? I could incorporate other instruments, or I could make it into a concert. Like, I don't know. This format is 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 so open because the baseline of it is, hey, are you talking or are you talking to someone else? That's the podcast format. It's not, oh, the like, I want to do... A simple podcast that explores the 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 fine work of Dr. Seuss, and we're going to spend four episodes per book of Dr. Seuss. Like, sure, you could do that, but I don't know. That's 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 too specific for what I'm trying to do right now. It's I would get caught up on the semantics, and the only way you're going to get better at something is if you do it. So that's. That's another reason why you're even hearing this right now is because I've said, you know what? I'm going to just do it. I spent, like, I should just show a video of, like, how this looks <laughs> because my office isn't set up. It's, it's not set up in the way that aesthetically I want it yet. But that's because I just got this off. It's only been a month. I haven't been in here every single day. So it's all these things take time. I can hear... You know, those moments where I'm like, I'm doing automate, like, you know, stuff with my mouth and I'm still too close to the mic. <laughs> you know, like it's very fourth wall of in real time as you're doing stuff, you're like, oh yeah, this is why you don't hear these kinds of things or like, maybe you do. And it's, it's part of the bit like, oh, someone's, it's an ASMR and someone's leaning in really close and they're like, hey, why is it? this is a bottle of uptime. I'm going to open it slowly. Did you hear that fizz? The, t the tiny fizz? And then and you're whispering. And you, and, and you know, I'm looking at myself on my phone and that's not what you do. You look at the camera. There's the camera. There's me looking at me. And if you're listening on the audio, you're like, what is, what are you, do? What are you talking about? And I'm like, you gotta watch the video to find out. <laughs> But again, think of think of what you've heard me talk about just in the last half hour. This is what 2020 has been like for me. It's going, all right, can't do shows indoors. We'll do them outdoors. Can't do shows outdoors. Okay, we'll do a live stream. Band doesn't feel comfortable doing shows live streamed. All right, we'll plan for remote learning or remote well, I guess remote learning and content. Everyone's got to learn on their own at their own pace, and content's got to be produced at its own pace. The, all these adjustments. All right, I can't write for certain publications. Let's reach out to other ones. Maybe they're still doing stuff. I've been contributing more to local spins. I've got more lined up that I want to do for local spins because that's a time. It's like, all right, I might make some grocery money off of that. I've been doing freelance writing, like. Since April, I've just been publishing like one to two reviews per month and I'm trying to increase it, but you know, I can't, I can't put money towards an ad budget and I, and I haven't even set up an email blast yet. I need to do that. So you, you, you start to see like the things you were putting off, like, oh, I don't really understand. Like what is sync licensing? That's a big one right now. Sync licensing. Everyone's like, oh, if I could get my music on television or in a commercial, like I'll be set forever. It's like. Yeah, but it's a slow burn. It's good to understand the process. And it's and it's also good to know that like you know, everyone thinks, "Oh, you know, it's got to be a chart-topping song. I got to be Billie Eilish and then I'll get my music in a movie." And you're like, "No, you don't have to be anyone." 
There are people who are literally just sync licensed musicians and you hear their music all the time and they never go on tour. They never, they rarely play shows out. They just produce and they, and they built their platform that way. It's like saying to like, a, I don't know, like, you know, years ago, if you, if you were a horn player and it's, I guess it's still true to this day. Like if, if you can double on instruments or triple or quadruple, as a as a horn player, you're gonna get a lot of work. You know, when I played in the musical, even at even the one at West Shore Community College, people were du- were doubling up. There are people who were like, okay, I, I can play an acoustic and an electric guitar. You know, it's a different type of playing, but they can do it and they can do it well. And then they, you know, they cover all the bases. When I played for Wicked at DeVos, like three years ago, I think at this point. That was like, I was seeing people, you know, like a wind section where they each had three or four instruments. And then like the bass player had like, oh, I have a, a fretless electric, a, you know, a regular like P bass. I have an upright bass. I have a five string bass. Like, you know, everyone's got to adapt and some skills are transferable. But nowadays you can it's it's so apparent or not apparent it's so you know necessary to see what your focus is and then what stuff can you surround it with if you're a performer what other things can you surround on your performing side of it oh maybe i'll make more videos of me playing because then that just helps advertise that i'm a performer or maybe i'll start a podcast where i'm talking just about whatever and then you know i could talk about my experiences as a musician it's you know just trying things is important you know i'm not i'm probably not going to end this the way i want to end it but i'm taking a cue out of jack conti's book book no i haven't read his book does he have a book he he uh has a video where he talks about the uh, the concept of work to publish and it's the idea that you don't get hung up on perfection because if you do, you're not releasing things. All you're doing is holding back. And there's people who've literally made their whole careers because they put some dumb thing on the internet. I just thought about uh, this sketch comedian uh, on YouTube. He also hosts a podcast. But first came these goofy skits, Gus Johnson. He put out a video this year called it's like every how movie or it's like how every movie handles shotguns. And it's just this funny two and a half minute video about like, you know, the, you know, they're oh they're cocking the shotgun all the time. And like how many shells are in there? Like you're, you're, you're loading all these shell. You're wasting a lot of bullets <laughs> and it's got 14 million views. Because it it went viral. It did he plan for it to go viral? No, nobody plan. The people who are like, we want to help you go viral. Viral virality is the name of the game. And it's like you can't mar- you can't build a business on being viral. You can't. <laughs> so, the, the creating content shouldn't come from a place of like, you know, I I hit play and. My first podcast, I am now vi- viral sensation. Dutcher Snedeker is out here. Man, look at He's doing all the viral things. He's playing the viral music the kids want to hear, like Scott Joplin. <laughs> you know, the viral. Every, every tween and millennial and Gen Z and whatever generation we're on now. And like, oh, it's all like... <laughs> Look at listen to the the dulcet tones of no vocals. It's just ragtime. The kids are calling it ragtime, and it's sweeping the na- like that doesn't happen. <laughs> All these local news people who are like, they call it YouTube, and people seem to love its creator. Like YouTube's been here. It's like a decade old plus. <laughs> it's. YouTube isn't like some hot new thing like the 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 late night people who had to change over from the television format to YouTube you saw the stumbles in real time 
people who you're used to like joke audience pause for laughter keep going like the pace had to change you know seth meyers got into the rhythm of like go 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 talk do it talk don't let up keep joke do this that that like colbert took a little second but he's found his footing he's a little bit more endearing it's strange that he kind of plays to the the boomer crowd a little bit even though like a lot of us that grew up with the colbert rapport like saw him as like you know this character and then like you know everyone everyone's got to adjust to a different format and that doesn't necessarily apply to entertainment either you think about like someone who works for a company and they go in and they're used to like all right every tuesday we got a meeting and all right every friday we got like the now it's all from home you got to figure out how to use zoom or maybe you're using skype or maybe you find some other thing Oh, your computer isn't that good? Got to upgrade your computer. Can you do that through your job? Have you ever asked your job for a new computer? Guess you got to figure out how to do that. Oh, well, am I just working from home all the time now? I guess I got to have a whole new schedule. I have to figure out how to separate where I work in my house versus how I relax. You know, it's been a whole shift. There's companies that are going to come out of COVID and they're going to be like, we don't need a giant commercial office space on this, you know, prime t- prime real estate area we're, we're going to downsize because we can have a portion of our workforce come in for meetings or do certain jobs certain points of the week and then do the rest of it at home like that's there's this whole shift in how everyone's thinking about how they're living their lives they're you know i'm con- i'm <laughs> at the point too where i'm like i need to get healthier because if there's going to be this long term, you know, not being able to find concrete work in the field with, you know, Founders was the closest thing to uh, that I've ever had to benefits other than the one year I worked at Allendale High School as a choir accompanist. Like, you are your own healthcare. You've got to do what's inherent. Like, you got to do what's what's so good for you that it just keeps fueling the engine. So for me, that's, you know, taking better care of myself, getting more sleep, eating better, doing exercise. I used to play two sports every year until I got to the point where I was in college and all I did was play music and I didn't do any extracurricular anything because I was in the music building all day. And, you know, you build that those habits over the last few years and you get to a point where you're like, you know what? This isn't working anymore. Got to adjust. That has been 2020. Some people have said that to relationships. They're like, you know what? This isn't working out anymore. See ya. Like, I didn't realize. <laughs> or, or like, you know, with roommates, you're like, I didn't realize I like didn't like living with this person. And now, you know, being in the house all the time with them, I am at my wits end. Because a lot of, I feel like a lot of the young generation, the the young people, you know, I'm 28, I'm not like forever old, like the people who, they're like, they're like, okay, we got to hustle, work, I'm working all these hours, I barely stay at home because I'm working, I'm hustling, I'm never at my house, I don't even live in my house, I don't have a house, yeah, you do, no, I don't, I just live on the grind, on the hustle. And then you spend two months with people and you're like, oh, this house is too small for this many people. Oh, I didn't realize this person did this. I didn't realize nobody did this. I didn't realize people didn't clean. (laughs) It's like you use more of the house and then more of it gets dirty. And you're like, what? Nobody's cleaning? Nobody? But why? I thought that it was just clean before. Well, that's because nobody was home. So, you know, like this whole year has been adjustments. And... There's there's going to be a point where the people who did anything, you know, anything, anything to help their career, they learn more about the, bu- the business they're in, they readjusted their living situation, they adjusted their health, they adjusted their, you know, who they're interacting with, they adjusted their relationships. They're going to look back on this year and be like, you know what, it was a super hard year, but I made a ton of positive changes. I made a ton of growth. Cause you add it up. Like 
like we all can't be Kevin Hart or The Rock or Gary V or you know these these insane people <laughs> who are like you know they have such a crazy drive and they have their hand in so many pots and they have a team supporting their efforts like we all can't be that but we can all be those guys where they were years ago before they got into you know like the, the rock before he got into WWE Kevin Hart before he got those big stand up specials you know Gary V before he like learned his business acumen working for years for his parents in a wine shop or whatever we can be at that point where we're at right now and Jack Conti I'm going to bring him up again go t- go look at what Jack Conti's done he's been making money doing creative stuff all over the place and learning the business end since YouTube was like first around like he was one of the first people to get ad revenue as a creator and like go viral on YouTube with his his group uh, Pomplamoose he's also the founder of Scary Pockets which does like it the he coordinates these sessions with featured singers and session musicians and they crank out all these funk covers of tunes people recognize and it's shot well and it's recorded well and it's cool all this stuff go look at that because he's you know he's of the optimistic side he's like this is the second renaissance we're going to have all these creators they're going to come out they're going to do stuff and it's going to be this whole generation of people who like they they quit their 9 to 5 and they made it work and they like they left this this thing partially because of safety concerns and now they realize they they had these skill sets and they built it up and did like so optimistic so <laughs> Uh, Jack Conti, Ari Hernstad, he's been the DIY dude forever, it seems like, and he's provided some great resources, great interviews, great books, all this stuff. And you know, it's what what else? What else you gotta lose, huh? If if you're in my position, like I, <laughs> I, you know, I'm single, I have two degrees in a thing that I've been also doing since I was eight. Think about that. I'm 28. I've been doing, I've been playing this instrument, playing the, the piano. Apparently I can only pick E flat. I'm going to pick a different key. I've been playing this since like I was eight. And like, you know, that would start it as like me being in keyboard world, like, uh, or no, not even that. The Alfred series, they do like, like, not that song, but, but like, they, you know, they start you off with like, learn the rhythm, and then they're like, oh, what about three notes? Oh, slow down. Oh, we got three notes. Okay, we're back to two notes. Like, that was when I was eight <laughs> in keyboard world. In the basement of Keyboard World, it's no longer on on Division, but Division Year 44th is where Keyboard World used to be. And then it was uh, taking private lessons at someone's house. And then it was taking private lessons at someone's office and then someone's house. And then it was taking private lessons for my undergrad. And then it was taking private lessons for my master's. Like, I've just been playing... I've been playing this longer than some people have been, al- been alive. Or that some people have done anything. Like, some people are like, I... I I've been working at this job for 45 years. And you're like, wow, that's longer than any commitment that most people do. Or like, I've been, me and me and him have been married for 80 years. And you're like, but you're only 70. How, that's, what? <laughs> and it's like, you know, like, I have to think about it. I've been two decades of my life have been music. That means, you know, birthdays concerts at schools uh you know performances competitions uh playing in bands recording learning more about like what genres i want to explore uh weddings bar gigs random venues playing around the state playing in different co- not countries uh <laughs> but playing in different states i would love to play in different countries when all this is said and done i, had, I have friends in europe i could go visit them and play some music but or like central and south america you know 
you meet these people at college. There's all these opportunities. And it, it, you know, it's think of anything you've done for that long. Like, oh, I've, I'm 24 and I've been walking since I was three. And you're like, cool, you're really good at walking now because you've been walking for that long. And maybe you've had to run, which is like a fast walk. Like, <laughs> that's what it's been for me. There's 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 life skills I don't know yet because all I do is do musicy things or uh, like you know other interests collecting nerdy stuff like video games like all the all these other things and <laughs> so if I've said anything that's like supposed to come across as advice it's just do it because that's what I'm doing I'm like you're here right now and we're just doing stuff you're listening. Maybe you've gleaned some information. And I'm just, I'm just doing, this is literally unscripted. This isn't me going like, all right, I've covered, you know, 2020. What a year. I'm talking about the difficult, like everyone knows how difficult 2020 has been. I've, I'm talking from my personal experience as an artist, the, the, the thought process. I didn't even cover a ton of the things that artistically people have been reacting to this year. You know, I've just been talking about my experience. There's so many things I could keep talking about, but I just wanted to keep it at a point where it's like, look, this is what this podcast isn't just the start of me, like getting into the medium of hosting and doing stuff or trying this format in general. This is, this is a collection of things of ideas of, oh, it might, it might not work. Uh, like, no, you just try it, try things. Because all you all you do is you you build new skills. So what what do you got to lose? Especially if you're a creative right now. You you if you have a creative skill and you like let's say you're really good at uh, I don't know you're really good at painting on plates and you've been doing it for like a hobby and you've given them as gifts and your painting's gotten better and your and like how you design around the plates you. Either maybe you make the plates too. I don't know, and you're and you haven't thought. Well, what if I sold this? Try it. Like you don't have to be Amazon. You don't have to meet a demand that's so high that you're constantly worried. You can be that person who's like, I made twenty plates, and when they're gone, you know, twenty more plates coming later. Who knows? Like that's what I that's what I never understood. Like I get okay, I get. I get the idea of having a hobby and a creative outlet for fun and for things and to enjoy it. I get that. Because, you know, as much as I like talk about like, oh, the business and strategy and blah, 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 I don't have a strategy. I just kind of, you know, I'm learning and I just kind of react to my environment. Like, oh, what's the environment right now? Oh, if you play a show, you could catch a pandemic disease and get sick. And even if you don't die, that's medical costs or like time that you could be spent doing other stuff. And, you know, you don't want to be contagious for the people that are more vulnerable. They're like, okay, well, let's, uh, what if we just tried to do, I don't know, like, uh, you know, think about trying out this kind of format. We're gonna, I'm gonna make a podcast about nothing <laughs> i'm just gonna start talking and hopefully someone listens because who knows maybe they, people will listen so you see you see what i'm saying here this is it's a it's the it's the result of things it isn't purely just like i'm gonna try podcasting it's the result of i'm at a point where i have to do these things and i you know, I'm having fun. This is all off the top of my head. It's it's very cathartic, but it's also like it's cool. I I like that I'm like, look, this is the podcast mic. This is a sure SM7B. This is what Third Coast has, and they're letting me use. I have this office that I can just, you know, I can aim things at. There's this I built this cheap it was like ten bucks, this cheap PVC green screen holder. It's not perfect. I need to make some adjustments, but I built it and, and I can put a green screen there and I can learn keyframe animation and get better at that. I have a setup for recording. I have a setup for like, you know, basic video editing. I'm not doing anything on a scale of Hollywood. 
I'm just trying to make stuff that goes online and maybe I'd combine different footage and mediums together. Like this, this is two angles. I have the keyboard cam, I have this face. Because I was like, well, I always get two things because I can't fit everything in the one frame. So, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's that time of year where you, you know, we're getting into the holidays and there's going to be, you know, navigating all that. But we're also getting to the end of a very long year. And a lot of people are going to have to make decisions based on, you know, where they where they are comparatively to earlier this year. And some of it's out of dire straits. Like, oh, there's no bonus. There's no magical bonus money coming because it's all gone. <laughs> they, all the money that would have been given has been stored away and put in other things and other people have taken it that don't need it and all this stuff and you know there's the for musicians especially all these funds these artist relief funds they're gearing some of them are gearing up for another like round of applications for 2021 including the michigan artist relief fund which i helped draft with um l lively and uh connor curtis we had the idea sitting together and working together on Crooked Tree stuff. We saw, you know, New York and I think Boston had a fund and Philadelphia maybe at the time, or maybe it was Pittsburgh. I don't know. But we saw some cities and we're like, let's do that here. And then we put it together and we did a bunch of live stream concerts and we learned like, okay, what do we need to do to get people in, invested in donating and the application process and all this stuff. I wouldn't have thought it would have it was out of pure necessity that it happened. It wasn't like it wasn't like, you know, uh, this was 3 years of meetings. It was out of pure necessity. So this is again, it's it's partial, you know, things leading up to it, but it's also out of necessity. I've been wanting to do this. This is this is a medium I've been trying to get into and I've been hung up on semantics when it's literally just point a camera, start talking. I'm sure that I'm going to have to the learning curve of mixing this and the learning curve of editing it all together and the learning curve of clipping it and advertising it and the learning curve. Everything's a learning curve. Life is learning. If you're not learning, <laughs> there's a, you know, I see these people who don't have to learn anything and they have the most boring lives. Like they're just like, they might be stable. I don't fault them for that at all. I don't fault them for having an income and taking care of a family and they can live like, Oh, they got a boat. No, oh, they got a, they got a nicer house. And like after 10 years of being at the one house and wow, they got a new car. Like that's sweet. But it's also kind of just like, you know what? So does that guy. So does this person. So does the dude like, okay, this dude's been in insurance for 50 years and he's really good at it now. That's great. He's, he's developed a skill, but you know, in the back of his head, he's always wanted to learn bass guitar. Never made time for it. Now that he's retired, he's going to play bass guitar. You know, why can't that be now? A lot of a lot of my friends have been shifting jobs. They've lost careers. They've lost opportunities. And I've seen a lot of them, you know, they've had to take stock in like, like, I can't live in L.A. anymore. It's too expensive. So now they're back in Michigan figuring out the next move. Or, oh, I can't live in the city of New York. I'm going to live just outside of the city because it's cheaper for me to live outside of the city and commute than it is to stay in the city. You know? And then then they realize, oh, I have more space. I'm not surrounded on all sides by other people. It's I'm, I'm able to stretch my legs and, and have more room to relax and, and work on what I'm doing. You know? It's... We're at this point and, you know, I encourage you to try things. I encourage you to point a microphone at your face and try talking. I've been going for over an hour, so I think I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> you know, I think that's plenty for a first time thing. I don't want to get too far off subject, but, you know, it's all it's all learning. We're all learning. Everyone's got to learn. So I encourage you to keep learning, keep growing, keep trying things. I'm going to keep trying stuff. I'm going to probably change this setup a little bit. But I got the first thing out of the way. 
and in no, nothing died. <laughs> no, there's which is crazy. Like this camera's still going, that one's still going, computers are still on, Pro Tools is still recording. That that's all I can ask for is the thing is things are recording, then I can salvage whatever. But anyway. Well, you know what? That seems like a good place to end anyway. You know, try things, do things. I if you have questions, you can ask me. If you're on Patreon, you have more of a direct line to what I'm doing. Um because you you deserve it. You're contributing to my efforts. You know, I'll I'll answer a Facebook message or an Instagram DM. I'm not really on Twitter. Still I don't really know what to do with that yet. It's been around forever, but it's never been a platform I spent a lot of time on. But, you know, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask me anything. Like, like earlier today, I, I put like, hey, Instagram, I'm just working on stuff. Ask me questions. Nobody's asked me questions. That's fine. But, hey, if I put it out there, <laughs> you know, like, let's have a conversation. Like, even if it's something dumb, like, no question's really dumb. Unless you're like, do you play piano? It's like, I think at this point... <laughs> You could you could infer that from what I'm putting out into the world, but yeah, try stuff, and hopefully you enjoyed this. I got a little bit more comfortable. I keep doing the shoulder thing, so I know I'm not totally comfortable because I don't know how to use my body on camera. <laughs> but this it was it's fun. This is a fun format, and for those of you who are also on Patreon. There are two other podcasts that I'm going to be workshopping over the next few months. What you're listening to right now is the Dutch Snedeker show where it's me. I'm just me doing whatever I want to do. Who knows how often this will be recorded? Maybe weekly. I don't know. It's all part of it, like this is all preview. And even this podcast was me doing months of a different format in smaller chunks getting into the habit of talking and which some people are getting the habit, you never stop talking. Um, so this has been the Dutch Seneca show. There's other podcasts. Uh, one is just going to be talking with industry people about the industry or, you know, how they relate to the industry nowadays. Some people have like put the industry to the side for now. Some people have, you know, shifted focus in the creative side of the industry. Other people I know have shifted to, you know, trying to understand it better. So I, I want to talk to those people and just get an idea of what they're up to. The other one is going to be focused on keyboards. It's going to be a little bit of a different format. There's going to be more, more keyboards, players talking about their setups, what works, what doesn't talking about music, what they're playing, what they're trying to learn, what they're trying to do, where they work, who they are, because I know of a lot of these keyboard players and I'm friends with a lot of them, but we don't see each other a lot because we're always working. So that's that's the other type of podcast that I'm trying to put together. Um, but again, the... Oh, wait. The Dutcher Snedeker Show is brought to you by... Uh, Third Coast Recording Company where I am uh, renting an office but also working as a session artist and hopefully I can get into the uh, production side of it but you know one thing at a time and whatever all that it's also brought to you by Earth Radio and Blushing Monk the two groups that I'm in maybe you want some new music for the holidays or some kind of merch like a Pass the Dutchie shirt, or a Mask the Dutchie mask, or something like, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, maybe you want a, a vinyl. Earth Radio's got a lot of vinyl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> words. You can, uh, you know. Check out EarthRadioMusic.com. Check out DutcherSnedeker.com. Uh, check out Third Coast Recording Company if you want to plan your next recording. 
because you could have me playing on it with all the goodies and treats that we have at the studio. Again. Try stuff. Do it. Uh, and thank you for listening. I'm gonna... Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's Sunday when I'm recording this, so I'm just gonna probably relax after doing some editing. <laughs> but again, Dungeon Snedeker Podcast. See what works for you, try stuff, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Who knows what the next episode will be about. Tell your friends, all that stuff. And, uh, Enjoy your day.